Hey guys, I just wore a hole through the outsole of my favorite Nakonas. So that means it's time for a resole. And unfortunately, resoles can be expensive, but you can save a little bit of money instead of going for a whole resole is to get a half sole. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna package these up and send them over to Siller Boot and Shoe, and he's gonna put a half sole on here. And we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of a half sole. So let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya And then I'll be on my way All right guys, these are my favorite boots from 2020 and I am not surprised that they have a hole in the sole because I wear these a lot. This isn't a very big hole. I know some of you guys are like, oh, you can probably go a little bit longer in those, Jeremiah. And you're probably right. I could take the chance and wear them a little bit longer, but this is the insole that's showing here. So the more that I wear these, the more chance I have of damaging the insole and then wearing that all the way through. And you definitely don't want that because that's gonna be really expensive. That's that's why as soon as I get a hole in my outsole, I like to get them resold. My left boot doesn't have a hole in it, but it's only a matter of time. It's like strings on a guitar. Once you break a string, you usually should change them all because the others will probably go sooner or later anyways. So I'm going to send these off to Siller Boot and Shoe for a half sole, and then I'm going to talk with him on this video about the pros and cons of a half sole job. So let's pack this up and send them out. Three weeks later. All right guys, the boots are back and they look spectacular. Great job by Siller Boot and Shoe on this half sole. In fact, it doesn't even really look like a half sole because Thomas did a incredible finish job kind of covering up that seam where he laid down the leather for the half sole. A lot of other half soles that I've had in the past don't do this and it's just like the regular leather color and the color that the sole was before so you can clearly see the half sole line and I never really minded that. I actually kind of thought it was like bragging rights of a regular boot wearer. However, I know lots of folks out there really appreciate this very clean look, this finished job here and I'm appreciative of it too. Best half sole job that I've ever seen on one of my boots. And Thomas did an awesome job at Siller Boot and Shoe. The leather that he's using for the outsole is nice and thick. I also got new heel caps on. I usually like to do that when I get resoles because usually the heel caps are about to go anyways. So new heel caps, they're nice and thick too. They're the Goodyear ones which last a good long time. So this is an awesome job by Thomas at Siller Boot and Shoe. And I had the chance to talk with him about half soles, the pros and cons, and some other questions. So here is my interview with Thomas Barrett of Siller Boot and Shoe. Hey everybody, I'm here with Tom Barrett of Siller Boot and Shoe Repair. Tom, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, I got to say that the half sole that you did on these Nakonas looks incredible. One of the best half soles that I've ever seen. Great. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. And I got a couple of questions here for you about half soles because I like half soles as an option to get boots resold. But I'm wondering from the expert uh, himself, what are some of the pros and cons of half half leather resoles. The first I think that everybody's going to be aware of is cost savings, half sole versus full sole. I've always seen half soles be cheaper than a full sole and for good reason. You're using less material. It's a less invasive repair. It takes less time, the whole work. So I think everybody can wrap their mind around the cost savings. If you want the boot to look as light new as possible and you don't like having a seam right in the arch of the foot, a full sole alleviates that aesthetic uh, character of, of getting a half sole. Um, but the one that really I spend my most time talking with customers about is the quality of the inherent quality of the boot when it comes to the door. So how was it built in the first place? And is it really appropriate to perform half sole or a full sole on that boot? And surprisingly, it can be all across the board. So many of the off the shelf boots these days 
you know, are typically going to be like this. You have a one piece molded rubber sole from the heel to the toe. It's all one piece, even though this may be dyed or may have a leather wrap on it or maybe a plastic heel base. There's no real natural material in here. And then when you get into the boot and you get down to the insole, the true insole, this is an insert. This is all terminology, right? But that's an insert. This is the insole. And in very high quality footwear, this insole is really what provides the foundation of the shoe or the boot. In this particular case, it's not leather. This is a synthetic material. It's a way for companies to save a lot of money to produce boots faster and a couple of other characteristics that come along with this compared to a leather insole. And so for a boot like this specifically, you can see this dark stitching running down each side. And this is the, the tail end of that stitch. And I mean, you can see how wide those stitches are. And that is actually the stitching that comes through the bottom of the boot. And so that is the inseam. And for good reason, they've set it in this recess. Well, if you take that inseam in out, let's say we're gonna do a full sole on this pair of boots, you lose, you run the risk of losing the size of the boot. This isn't in bad shape. This synthetic insole is not in bad shape. So if we took this outsole off, there's a good chance that the glue, because remember, if we take the outsole off, we have to cut that inseam. So if we take that inseam and cut it and take the sole off, there's a good chance the glue holding this insole to the leather would remain intact. You wouldn't lose sizing. You wouldn't get a wider boot that was shorter or a narrower boot that was longer. It would all stay together. However, in well-worn boots with similar insole materials, this is a typical boot you could get off the shelf just about anywhere. It's got a real good year welt, so there are good construction aspects about it. But this guy is a working cowboy, and he got in water. And this is one of those synthetic or fiberboard fillers. Oh, yeah. Hell, I can't even get this out because it's stuck in there. But if I took the entire sole off of this boot, especially here through the arch, what you're left with is, imagine if you will, a leather sock, can you cut the bottom off of it? What are the chances you're gonna get a new bottom and sew it on there and have it the correct width and length? It's really easy to make it narrower and longer or shorter and wider because it just moves around. So, you know, going back to those three things that I look at, you've got the cost, everybody can understand that. You've got the aesthetics, everybody can understand that. But when it comes to the inherent quality of a boot and how it's built, it really, it, for me, dictates what I recommend in terms of a repair. I don't see any quality differences between a half sole and a full sole at all, if it's done correctly. And the appropriate job is done for the boots. So in this case, I would never do a full sole on a pair of boots like this. And if a customer was really dead set on it, there'd be substantial warnings leading up to it saying, hey, you know, things can change. I have lasts here and I put those in to try and maintain that shape. But when you take a boot all the way apart, unless you have the exact last that it was built on, there's always a chance it might not go back how it was. So in terms of the benefits between the two, cost, aesthetics, everybody gets that. Um, when it comes to getting a boot back that fits and feels similar to what it did before, you really have to look at the boot or the shoe and make a determination based off of the inherent quality in that boot or shoe, whether or not it's appropriate. Uh, a very high quality boot like this one that has a leather insole what you're standing on is actual leather. And so the upper is stitched to that insole through the welt, a true Goodyear welt. So anybody can be confident when you take that sole off, half sole or full sole, that's not gonna change, especially at the ball of the foot for this boot because that's where the welt ends. Well, you run into the, you can run into the same issues for sizing throughout the arch, but typically, if a boot company cares enough about their boots 
to put a leather insole in it, the upper is going to be tacked in place to the insole around the entire boot. So you can take the entire outsole off and replace it without worries of inadvertently resizing a boot. It's very interesting to me that the insole can play such an important part to the outsole resoles. I've heard from some cobblers and I've had a half sole done three times to my boulets, but they've said that they've had to alternate between half soles and whole soles because when you do a half sole twice, it seems to be a little less secure. Do you agree with that? Why or why not? So a full sole, everybody's familiar with that. You have one piece of soling material, be it leather or rubber, that goes from the heel uninterrupted all the way to the toe. When you replace a full sole with a full sole, you get the same thing. A half sole is where you're replacing somewhere in the arch forward all of that material. Now, it's not a hard splice like this. This is in preparation for a half sole, but it's only the first step. And I'm not going to get really specific about where the blending occurs because this example was set up not to show that point. You're, you never butt two pieces of soling material like this. You overlap both. And so what would happen is this would be beveled down to nothing. And then the replacement sole would be beveled up to nothing. And those two layers would overlap. So you'd have a substantial area of overlap between the original and the new sole. Now, the way I do half soles is that I have that area of overlap and then I nail in place very, very typically just exactly what you have there that I did for you. You've got three nails to tie all of the layers together. Whatever they are, it varies by boot, but typically you have an outsole, you have some sort of filler, and then you have an insole because you don't want any movement throughout the arch. You use clinch nails to tie all of that together in addition to adhesive. And then lastly, if you can do it, stitching around the entire boot. I believe on your boot, the welt starts forward of that seam. So in some cases, the stitching does or does not act as that third level of attachment at the seam of the half sole, at, the, at least at the visible edge of the seam. But keep in mind that seam is an inch or so long. So there's the visible line you can see. And then forward of that, where the original full sole now ends, is the other edge of that seam. So do you need to alternate between full sole and half soles? Well, if you have a boot that's pegged or nailed from the factory, you have those holes in the outsole, which you're gonna remove at a half sole or a full sole. So discussion of the outsole losing integrity to me is really kind of on the sidelines. It's what happens above that, the, the materials and the pieces that aren't changed. So with a full sole, I would say you're gonna, the way I was taught to resole is you want to replicate what you took off and just do it better. So you would peg or nail exactly the way that the previous sole was. With half soles, the reason I don't do that is because there's an increased chance of driving a nail near or through the exact hole you just took a nail out of. And when you do that, in my opinion, you run a, a better chance of widening that hole and increasing the risk for a failure, short term or long term, than if you nail in some other area. So when you put on a half sole, you'll, my nail pattern is always different than what the original sole had. That way you're going through fresh material and it, I, I really aim to minimize the chance of reusing an already used area in that insole that, that doesn't get changed down. Okay, so that's the first half sole. Second half sole, well, then the begs the question, aren't you gonna put the nails in the exact same spot? Yes, however, you always, always, always want to put whatever parts you're putting on, you want to put it on fresh material. So if that's where, let's just say the area was for my first half sole, when it comes back and I need fresh material to glue the new half sole on. So this line 
moves back an eighth to a quarter of an inch. So now if I use my exact same nail pattern, they're going to be set closer to the heel stack an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Again, can you hit the same holes you hit the first time? Absolutely you can. But you're taking deliberate steps to minimize that risk. Now, because you have to glue to fresh material every time to have a good repair, at some point you're going to get too close to the heel stack. That's hands down when you have to get a, a full sole. When you can no longer do a half sole, nobody would argue. Your only option is a half sole unless you want to do some sort of a half split sole under the base, which shouldn't be done, but there are plenty of examples of it out there. Um, do I really get in the weeds about trying to sell people on half soles versus full soles? I really don't. I have customers who will come in here and they're in oxbow stirrups four or five days out of the week. And with those customers, one bad experience with half soles and they're done. They won't listen to you about it. They won't hear about it. You're wasting both your time. I've had other people who are in the same circumstance, but have never had a bad experience with half soles and they'll do half soles all day long. Is there inherent risk to have a seam at a high point of use? Of course there is. Um, but if done right, I've seen it ser be serviceable and last every bit as long as a full sole with no issues whatsoever. So do you really need to get a half sole and then a full sole? I'd say it really depends on your use, but it also depends on how your repair person is going to go about the job. It comes down to that final use as well as how the repair is going to be conducted. Because if you're just taking one off and putting one right back on in the same spot, I think everybody can understand, you know, about the third time you stitch through welt, maybe you should have replaced the welt. Well, it's no different from putting clinch nails in the same spot every time. At some point, they're just not going to grab anything and they're just there for show. And if one of your primary fasteners is just there for show, it's time to start thinking that the integrity of that repair may have been compromised. Can you do a half sole with rubber instead of leather? Like, does it matter? Absolutely does not matter. So what I've noticed is when you're sticking like material to like material, yeah, bomber adhesion, it is just a very well paired match, right? Leather to leather, rubber to rubber, the adhesives that are used, boy, they just play well when the materials are the same and you do it right. And there's just, it's awesome, especially with leather. If you do it correctly, once you stick leather together, it's just like welding. The, the, the goal of any weld is to make the weld stronger than the two individual pieces inherently. So if you do a stress test, the rip occurs to one side or the other of the weld, but the weld is stronger. Leather to leather adhesion, and this is why when it comes to leather half soles on leather sole boots, I have no concern whatsoever. If you prep and prime that leather and glue it, you're not going to have any issues. And I, I say that pretty confidently because I have never had any issues. And my predecessor, my teacher, I'm sure he had issues. And that's why he learned the method he did. And he taught me the method that he struggled to find. Um, but just awesome adhesion when you have like material with like material. Now, I have never been asked to take a boot, which was originally rubber sold and half sole it with leather. I have never been asked to do that, and I have never done it. I would absolutely do it if somebody wanted me to, and I would provide them that exact explanation. Let's see what happens. But I can't imagine that it would be a different end result than what I have done and do very frequently, which is take a leather sole boot and put a rubber half sole on it. And even then, I have not had issues with adhesion. I have not had issues with the two dissimilar materials. It comes down to your prep and your prime stages, your dry time for your glue so it can set up appropriately. I would say when it comes to Western boots, eight to nine out of 10 resoles I do are half soles. 
and I would say five to seven out of 10 hassles that I do started as leather and go to rubber. Predominantly people want rubber soles on their boots, especially around here, uh, it rains, it snows, then it's sunshiny, you're on and off abrasive materials like asphalt, concrete, rocks, whatever. Leather soles just tend to wear out very quickly here. And it's only the diehard cowboys who are in the saddle every day who really, really will not stray from a leather sole boot uh, or dancing shoes, which never see the light of the day anyway. They're always on a dance floor. Um, but in terms of taking a leather sole boot like this guy right here, and putting a rubber sole on that, I would say it is predominantly what I do. It just lasts so much longer. I mean, when I was when I was in my uh, boulets that have had six resoles, uh, three half resoles, uh, I would run through that leather outsole in like six months at most. So uh, it definitely makes a huge difference. You can you last it lasts so much longer when it's rubber. And one thing in terms of the dissimilar material and the quality of the adhesion and just how that those two materials interact with each other at the seam, the visual seam that, that is on the bottom of the boot at the arch, it's not to say it can't be made to look as good as the seam that is just easy to make beautiful when you have similar materials. So leather blends very well leather on leather, rubber on rubber blends very well. But when you have those two dissimilar materials and you're finishing that out, it takes a fair amount more effort to get the same visual end result to have a uninterrupted line, a seam, when you have those dissimilar materials. So tear out is much more common when you go from a leather full sole to a rubber half sole on top of that. It really has no implications for the integrity of the repair. Visually, unless you're willing to spend the time and you've developed a skill or a system to really perfect that, it, it's hard to make it look the same. But like I say, 90% of my customers around here could not care less. They're in it for function and function alone. And I've seen them come back for another half sole and the seam is marginally different even after they've worn it for eight, nine, 12 months, whatever it is. Do they last as long as whole resoles? Cause you still got that same bit of leather there at the ball of the foot, same, same uh, wear. Yep. So unless you're on an oxbow stirrup or you're on an ATV or foot pegs or up and over panels or something. And this, unless this is a primary point of wear for you, whatever you put on here is going to last at, this rubber half sole is going to last just as long right here as this rubber full sole. Same thing with leather. Yeah. But are there any types of boots that you can't do half soles on? Like any, any easy categories that you can help um, the audience with um, that can't have half soles? Everything can be resold and everything can be half sold. It just depends on the original construction of the boot and how much money it's, it's worth to you. So to grab this one, uh, this is the tip, typical boot. I don't even pay attention to brand because it's, for me, it's all about how that boot was built. Uh, it's about the quality of materials that went into it and the skill of the person who built it. So for me, a molded rubber bottom sole, take the brand name off. To me, they're all the same. In this particular instance where we're looking at that really long stitched inseam that goes from the inside to the outside, this welt is completely aesthetic. It appears to have stitching. It looks like real cloth stitching, but it only goes through the welt. It's just glued together. And my hat's off to the company. That glue is amazing. It help, It holds up like, like crazy. But would I do a traditional half sole on this? If it really meant somebody, something to somebody, they could probably talk me into it, but it would come at substantial cost because to remove this and to Goodyear welt it, many of the fundamental characteristics about this boot have to change. And in general, by the time we talk about all of those changes and modifications to then half sole the boot, 
we're beyond the price of buying a new pair of boots of this quality. And most people don't have that attachment to their boots. That being said, that's talking about what I would consider a traditional half sole for a Western boot where you're, you're removing something, you put something back on, you've got adhesive, you've got nails, you've got a welt and welt stitching. I have seen, and on occasion I have freshened up this layer, so ground down to fresh material and glued on a sole. I've seen this done by people I would call leaders in the field, experts, you know, if you want to use the term masters, people who have more experience individually than a handful of us collectively. And I've seen them just laminate different soling sheets on boots to give them some more life. And I've done that myself. The real issue that we run into, the, the risk that we run into is that to have good adhesion, there's a whole lot of things that go into that. To keep it brief, you have to have clean surfaces. If this has been running around outside and everything that could be outside, you have to remove a fair amount of material to get to clean surface. And when does that happen? There's no like hidden little indicator in here that says, hey, now I'm clean. So you run the risk of working with a contaminated surface. Number two, I don't know what this is. I don't know what blend of rubber this is and the type of material that you're trying to use an adhesive with may require a primer. If you don't use the right primer, it can be as easy as that to take the repair off. So can a hassle, a laminated hassle go on a boot like this? Yes, absolutely. I've seen it done. I've done it. When people ask me to do that, it is prefaced by, well, before I agree to do it, I put out every cautionary warning I can. And I always stand behind my work. So if I do something and it falls apart, usually I knew there was a risk going into it that that might happen. And it usually comes down to the wrong adhesive or the wrong primer. And you just try it again until you find that winning combination. Um, so can anything be half sold? Absolutely. Would I half sold something like this? I usually try to talk people out of it. In my experience, by the time a boot like this needs attention out here, the rest of the boot, the, the overall health of the boot is usually poor enough that it's not worth the risk of a failure here to me or to the customer. Um, again, if it's something of sentimental value, that's a different conversation, but can anything be hassled? Yeah, absolutely. If you're shopping for a boot specifically that you want to be hassled easily, get something with a true Goodyear welt or is, is a true welted boot. There's, there are other welt types out there besides Goodyear, but a true welted boot. And if you really want to score some points on top of that, get something with a real leather insole. Those make for the best because even though a boot like this can be half sold, when you take that apart, even if that's intact, it's still not leather. It's still a very thin piece of material. It can still move. Something like this, you can do half sold. Half, you can do as many half soles on that as you have room as that line gets cl closer to the heel stack. And where did these boots that you did for me, where did they rank in that little lineup that you had there? Oh, those, those are just typical top tier boot uh, in terms of quality, in terms of the insole, in terms of overall condition. Uh, yeah, that was the perfect time to send them in. You had a pinhole in it. So you got every penny out of those soles. You stopped at a pinhole in the sole. So you didn't at all damage or compromise the insole. Um, yeah, it's just super easy to work on. Cause when you take a pair of boots like that apart, there's no concern about changing the size. There's no concern about changing the fit or the feel because it's still a boot. It just doesn't have this piece 
and you just put that piece right back on. Huge thanks to Thomas for spending the time with me on that interview. All of the links to his social media, his email, are down in the description. You guys should follow him on Instagram. That's where all of that footage came from. He live streams all of the time. Pretty much every boot that he's worked on, he's live streaming it. So you can see him work on your boots if you send them to him and then follow him on Instagram. There's a couple more things that I wanted to mention about a half sole or just a resole in general is that this leather here, this leather is really stiff and thick. So, so I'm gonna need to wear them outside to break them in a little bit. And we gotta scuff up these soles. So let's take these outside and give these smooth leather soles some traction. Wow, I really miss these boots. They weren't even gone that long, but man, are they so comfortable. They do feel a little bit stiff uh, with that new sole, but they'll break in in no time. So new soles can be really, really slippery. And the way that you get more traction on them is you take them to some asphalt or some stones and you really kick them. That's how you get traction. It might seem a little bit awkward to do that, wear away that leather after you just got them re -sold. But you got to or else you'll fall on your ass. And that's a good start on traction. Not bad. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your next half sole. Please consider using Siller Boot and Shoe, and I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace. My boots were a small hole, so give me a half sole, and I'll save some dough, then wear them some more with that half sole. Yeah. Why don't you check out this custom Siller Boot and Shoe boot up here? Or I got a music video down here I think you might enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace. Thanks so much for watching.